Welcome, everyone. So, first of all, you already know everything about me. You know that I work with bubbles. So, what is there at the moment, the title of my talk, what I want to tell you, is almost redundant in some way. But still, this is the summary of my talk. So, uh, what I'll try to demonstrate to you is that all these things that we'll try to encounter while we work around the world, around, uh, around us, have something in common, which is, you might have guessed, bubbles. Because bubbles are everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. I mean, I'll try to demonstrate to you that bubbles affect our lives in ways that you, we, we cannot even imagine, we, we didn't think about. And that's what changed my way of being a scientist. So we heard at the start of tonight that being a scientist is play every day. So who in the room has ever played with bubbles? Can you raise your hands? Well, it looks a great number, I would say. So I'm happy I'm not alone. <laughs> so this is what I call the bubble world. Uh, but since I have just a little time, I selected for you a part through it. So. Um, I doubt we will have enough time to look at the other places, but that's what I will talk to you tonight. So the first thing I want to tell you about is strong bubbles. So have you ever seen one of those? That's a pond skater. It's an insect which walks on water. But now, can you see below his legs? Now, if I have a balloon and press, my fingers are sent back by a force, which is what we could, we could think is keeping this insect afloat. But in reality, if you look closer, closer with a microscope, you will see that near its fit, there are small, tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles. So this insect is actually walking on bubbles. Now, this might seem strange, but well, uh, this idea fascinated other people who started to do some extreme sports like this. And you can see that he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it. <laughs> Not so much, isn't it? <laughs> this is getting very common in the UK, actually. Uh, and if you go on YouTube, you'll find a lot of movies on that. Um, some, somewhat better was the illusionist Magical Dynamo, who in 2011 was working in central London on the water. And again, in some way, he had a bubble below it, but I will not tell you the trick. The other thing I want to tell you about is strange bubbles. Now, this is directly from the Guinness World Record, and that's the longest bubble in the world at the moment, which is 50 feet long. Can you imagine a 50 feet long bubble? Well, I can't, uh, even because in some way it's longer than my flat itself, and my wife, who is in the audience, can confirm that. <laughs> Now, the point is that when we think about bubbles, we think about them being spherical. But this is not all of it. You can actually do other shapes. One shape that I will try to do with you tonight is a very simple one. It's a cubic bubble. Now, what I have here is a frame that I'm inserting into soapy water twice. And well, at some point, I'll leave it here for you to see. What I get is a cubic bubble. How can it be? Well, let's try something even better. Let's try with a triangle, like that. And then I insert it again, like this. And I get somewhat, well, not very well. And I get a triangle of bubble. But when I blow them, well, when it works, they come out round again. So what's the trick there? And we can go back to the presentation. Well, uh, more importantly, why is it important to study strange shapes of bubble? What you see there is, are some uh, organisms which form plankton. And if you look at them, they've been around for 600 million years. And if you look at them without you know, the cell part, they have a skeleton which look like exactly like one of those. So what <coughs> keeps them alive builds on a skeleton and walks like a bubble. And so they, in a way, they are, uh, their life depends on the science of bubbles. So I 
heard someone told me that Einstein was saying that uh, God does not play dice, but maybe he plays with bubbles. <laughs> and what you can do with bubbles is something more interesting like that. If you think about Victorian age, what they had was a gun which was resting on, um, on some wire, which was doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing here with my bubbles. So you give shape, and you can do something more fashionable like this bubble hem, or what this uh, famous singer is wearing in this dress. So the physics of studying multiple bubbles is the same that you can find in dressmaking. But we can be more ambitious than that. And we can put, we can try to live in a bubble. Now, living in a bubble is, can be nice, but if that bubble is too small, you can have problems for that, huh? when it's neck time. And in particular, it might become quite difficult <laughs> to eat an apple. So what is the way forward? Very easy. Let's make a bigger bubble. Let's make a flat. And here, this was live of maybe seen in 2007, someone put an elephant in a bubble. That's the equivalent of a studio flat. But now if you go on the Guinness World Record, you find that the current number is 181 people in a bubble. Why is it interesting to study this kind of phenomena? Very simple. Because if you look at uh, science fiction movies, you see that many of the cities of the future look like bubbles. Well, this is from Star Wars the Second, and this was underwater, so no wonder. I mean, it's underwater. That is from the movie of The Simpsons, and that's Springfield covered in a bubble. That's Epcot, so they wanted to give a futuristic idea of the city. But that's the future, and that's the present. And so if you go in, if you had uh, looked at the Olympics in Beijing, you would have seen that the China's National Swim Center was made by bubbles. And then the year after, you could go around the Central Park in New York, you would have found structures like that. Next time you go on the Alps and try to have a cake, a chocolate cake like the one that we had tonight, you probably eat it in a building like that. Why is that? It is because it turns out that when, well, we said that when we blow out bubbles from here, we get them spherical again. The fact that bubbles are spherical comes out to a very simple rule, which is save energy. So we are going to build maybe the cities of the future in the shape of bubbles because we want to save energy. So even a simple bubble might teach us something about energy. But talking about cakes makes me think about this. Now, you might know or might not know that most of the food that we eat has a taste which depends on bubble. And what I'll try to do if with the help of the movie here is to show you Actually, marshmallows have bubbles in them. Did you know that? You did. That's great. So what I'll try to do here is I'll try to extract the air from the bottle when eventually it comes. <coughs> so can you zoom here on the bottle? What I'll do, I'll extract the air. Look at the marshmallows. They're growing, aren't they? Now, these marshmallows are not so fresh. But to show you that they have grown, I'll put the air back. Now, this is the same phenomenon that you find when you buy marshmallows on the top of a mountain. They look larger, but actually they are the same marshmallows that you have here in Teddington. So never buy marshmallows when you go on top of a mountain, because they are the same and they're cheating on you. But, the, but there are other foods there which whose taste depend on bubbles. Think about Swiss cheese. That's cheese with holes in them, and there are bubbles. Think about biscuits, and think about champagne. Now, there is a French study which demonstrated three years ago that 30% of the taste of champagne depends on bubbles. And that was a French study, so we have to believe in that, because they, they know their champagne. <laughs> but this is my favorite. <laughs> so this is ice cream, and the MPL ice cream uh, if you come and visit us, you'll find that it's done with liquid nitrogen. And the trick is, if you prefer Italian ice cream to normal ice cream, it's because you prefer smaller bubbles than larger bubbles. So the texture, someone would say, or the perception is different. And here are two big mysteries of our modern times. So the first, which have been just, which are subject of study, 
In fact, it has been discovered only this year why the bubble singiness go downwards instead of going, or going upwards. And the, the other one is something related to the fact, well, I said that these marshmallows were stale. You can actually distinguish, well, when you get crisps and you want to distinguish whether they are fresh or not, you hear the sound, don't you? And that's the same with biscuits. Well, that sound depends on the bubbles. So the bubbles, you are popping the bubbles just like when you do this. These were bubbles again. <laughs> so you pop the bubbles, but the liquid or the solid around is different. And so they make a different sound. So this goes to the key of my talk, which is sounding bubbles. So can you make for me the sound that you hear when you walk along the seaside? Can we do it together? <laughs> now. 90%, 90% of that sound comes from small, small, tiny bubbles, which do, look, they expand and collapse. They expand and collapse. <laughs> they expand and collapse. And just like the plane that Ian was showing in his movie, they radiate sound. So when you walk along the seaside, the sound that you hear comes from bubbles making aerobics. <laughs> and this is true every time you hear the sound of water. In fact, architects in the uh, Renaissance, which were designing fountains, were actually designing the sides of the bubbles. Because large jets make different bubbles than small jets. But that's another subject which will be never ending. Let's go forward. So another point where you, you can find bubbles in the sea was cause of very much concern for the Royal Navy when they went to Lord Rylig. Lord Rylig is probably one of the greatest uh, scientists in the UK. And well, incidentally, he was also one of the founders of the place where I work. And uh, they went to him, and I can imagine the scene. It was like, something like that. Sir, we have a problem. <laughs> and the problem was that the propellers of the ships were being destroyed, and they didn't know why. And if Lord Riley got on the, on, the, on the problem and found that unwanted bubbles were the cause. And this phenomenon is the same that nowadays we can find in our washing machines or in the pumps of airplanes, of which we heard before. This phenomenon is called cavitation. So, Cavitation is a word which means bubbles are formed, well, without control in some way, or with control. And that's the trick. That's the science. So to demonstrate to you that it's important, I have this slide here. If you have seen the movie Ant for Red October with Sean Connery, at some point, well, they had stolen a Russian submarine. They were trying to go away with it. But at some point, they uh, they can actually detect the submarine. And this was, and actually during the movie you hear that they were, they were hearing the cavitation produced by the submarine, by the propeller. This was one of the methods at the end of the Second World War with which people was finding submarines. So they could maybe shield from the sonar, but they could not silence the bubbles. And what you see there, <coughs> is a graph of how they tried to uh, reduce the noise levels produced by submarines. But can you see that it goes flat at the end? Well, that's because up to a point, they could not silent the bubbles. So still, if sub a submarine doesn't, doesn't want to be caught, bubbles are a problem. So it's very important to detect them. And this is what we do at MPL. We try to find ways to measure these bubbles. And what do we do? Well, simple. We listen to them. We created, well, you could imagine this like being a big ear, which listens to the sound produced by the bubbles. And if you tune it in a way, you can tune your bubbles, and you can produce musical instruments, like this bubble organ, which was designed by Ian. Well, you have seen that he's quite good in inventing things. And uh, we presented this at the Royal Society. 
And Ian uh, said that actually he can play uh, Maria the Little Lamb on it, which is interesting when you have bubbles into the game. But someone said at the start that I work with medical bubbles. Now, to demonstrate what the, how does it work, I have an incredible piece of science, a glass and a spoon. Now, what I want to show you is, can you hear this sound? Now, if this was one of the glasses which I received as a gift when, uh, when I married, this would have sounded much better. This is not so great, but still, it has a sound. Now, what happens if I put it in the water? Can you hear that the sound is slightly changed? Well, not so well with this glass, but it is changed. So the point is, if you have a glass and you know the size, the shape, and the material, you, can, you know what, what is the peculiar sound that this glass makes. Now, make a jump with me, and let's go to bubbles. Now, let's imagine this is a bubble that you know very well. So you know exactly, I will ring just like a bell, like a church bell. And this technique is used to improve the contrast in ultrasound. Ultrasound is now a technique which is used in every hospital all over the world as first line of diagnosis. <coughs> the point is that it's not so, how to say, easy to interpret the images. The contrast is not so great. And you cannot just turn a knob because there is a lot of stuff actually in there when you look through it. In my case, a lot of fat, as you can imagine. <laughs> well, it has been shown that bubbles can do the trick. So what you see here is an image uh, without bubbles and an image with bubbles. Can you spot the black thing here that you could not spot there? Well, that's a tumor. Nowadays, you can buy bubbles which are very, very tiny in vials like that. They are covered with fat so that they do not get together. They get injected in the blood, and eventually, you can detect tumors much better, incredibly better, so that a lot of hospitals all across the UK and the world are starting to use it, because now ultrasound becomes extremely powerful in finding the bad guys. But once you have found the bad guys, you want to kill them. And that's where the science that we are trying to do starts. So I'll show you this movie, which was taken by Philips. The, the thing that he's using is a sound probe. And you can see the bubbles. At some point, you find the bad guy, and then blast. You destroy the bubbles. Now imagine that the bubbles are loaded like bullets with the drugs that you want to release. Now you have a new type of chemotherapy without side effects. But to do that, just like with the glass, you need to know your bubbles. And now, this is my motto for tonight, thou shalt know thy bubbles. And in doing that, how do we do that? We try to trap the bubbles in light. So in a Shakespearean way, you want to hold the bubbles like that, and then ping it. But to do that, you don't want your hand to be there. And so what you do is you use some tweezers made of light or sound. Now, what you have seen before was a way in which you can manipulate small particles using sound. What I'll show you is a movie in which we manipulate a bubble, which is this thing, with a circle of light. Now, how big is that? That one is as tiny as one of your hair. And these are the ones which are used in medicine. Now, bubbles are not new to medical application, and I'm finished. Uh, because they are used to destroy kidney stones. So you use sound, you destroy the kidney stones by making bubbles which erode them, like, just like the propellers before. If we can do controlled bubbles, we can do this better and also do this with cancer. So I try to show you that bubbles are everywhere, that they affect our life in a lot of ways that I hope you didn't know before. And I want to leave you with fireworks. Before I thank you, and what I do, I use an Alka-Seltzer, a film container. I put myself in safety. <laughs> and 
and I use a bit of lemon juice. A bit of lemon juice. Then I close this. And thank you for your attention. At some point, you will see that bubbles will be able one day to take us to the stars. Oh.